And first I'll say good evening and welcome everybody to the Monday, June 14th, regular meeting of the Town of Easton Planning and Zoning Board. In keeping with the ongoing emergency order from Governor Charlie Baker to limit gatherings and maximize social distancing and under the legislation passed to address remote board meetings during the emergency declaration, this meeting will be conducted remotely over Zoom. Attendance by board members will be remote and remote attendance shall count towards a quorum. This meeting will also be available on eCast. While conducting this meeting remotely, we will endeavor to keep the meeting operations as close to our standard operating procedures as possible. However, use of this platform will necessitate some additional meeting protocols. While board members and applicants will be on video and audio, public participants will join the webinar as attendee, meaning they are muted with no video feed from them. During the public testimony portion of the program, of the meeting, mem members of the public can be recognized by using the raise hand function or the Q&A function on Zoom. If you are joining only by phone, you may press star nine to raise your hand. Um, uh, board members will be asked to announce themselves when making a motion and a second so that it will be clear to the audience and minute takers who made the motions. All votes will be by roll call. To ensure we have a quorum, we will now do a roll call. Gregory Strange present. Peter Deshane here. Chris Anderson here. Robert Stetson here. Amash, you want to chime in? I think you're muted. Now I'm muted. There you go. Thomas Gunn here. Great. Thank you. All right. So let's see. Um, so I know we received we received a request to continue 58 Mill Street. I don't have that in front of me. I'm assuming is it to our June 28th? Do you know, Stephanie? Yes. Okay. Yes. If someone care to make that motion. Motion to continue 58 Mill Street and five, five Owl Ridge Road to June 28th. I'm okay. Almost get a second. Um, all those in favor? Strange eye. Strange eye. Stats and I. Nine. 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 All right. And the same 560 Foundry Street, Sawmill Village, they would like to continue to June 28th. Motion to continue Sawmill Village to June 28th. Yeah, I'm second. Um, all those in favor, say aye. Stats and I. Anderson, I. Very good. All right. Um, next up, uh, states continued discussion of the termination of subdivision and default for incomplete road construction. Stephanie, the floor is yours. Yes, the board asked to continue this to give the um, developer <clears throat> time to respond because um, you'll recall at the last meeting I mentioned that he had given me a call, um, asked to have another or an updated street inspection done and that, that he would deposit the money to have Amory Engineering do that. We have not heard from him. Susan has reached out, Suzanne has reached out to him a couple of times. We haven't heard that. Um, received a response from him um, and we have not received the deposit to have Amory move forward. Rob had also asked if the board found the developer in default, did that set the wheels in motion such that if the developer came back and um, said he would complete the road, he wouldn't be able to do that. I did talk with town council and he said, no, that wouldn't be the case that, you know, we would have conversations and, you know, come try to come to some agreement on how it might move forward. 
Okay, so I guess the issue before us is uh, do we find, do we want to find the developer in default? And if I understand correctly, that doesn't automatically trigger the town having to rebuild the road. So uh, would we handle this by a motion? Or do we do a vote? Whoa, what just happened? Um, Stephanie, is there a procedure we should follow? Yes, um, a motion should be made to find the developer in default of completing the road and for the town to proceed with appropriate actions um, to acquire the funds to complete the road on its own. So moved. Excellent. We've taught you well. <laughs> Do we have a second? I'll oh, second. second. Suzanne, I'll let you decide who you want to give that to. Okay, Rob, second. And okay, any further discussion? Yeah, the only the only thing I wanted to discuss that re really what I was trying to get at is I did look at the decision. And these are covenants that run with the land, and they specifically uh, apply to successors and assigns based on the language. And I was curious if town council had any opinion on enforcement. And what I mean by that is it seems to me that it could potentially fall on the shoulders of, of the buyers. And, and that's really what I was, I was curious about because the enforcement mechanism may not be complete <laughs> based on the security that we currently have in place. That, that, that's what I was hoping to get an answer on. I don't know the answer. And um, it could, and that would be something that we could explore with town council. So for example, we had another development in town where the developer defaulted on completion of the road the town was holding um, some money as surety. This was intended to be a private road, um, but the town was in the position to take to to take control of the money and then complete the road. But because it was intended to be a private road, the property owners and the homeowners association intervened, um, filed an intervention, I believe. It's called uh, Bob, and asked that the town consider um, or ask the court to forward any money that was received to them, and they would take responsibility and clean, clear. Um, I'm sorry, finish the road. And when I've talked with counsel, he has talked about that as being a similar situation that we could potentially do that. Okay. But the first step is for the board to find the developer in default. So yeah, I don't, I don't disagree. I don't disagree with that point at all. Yeah. Um, it just more seemed to me like maybe we didn't have everybody involved. You know, it, it, if, if you were to file a subsequent action, would it be filed against also the current owners? That's kind of the question. I just wanted to frame it. it that may very well be something way down the road but I, that was what I was interested in. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just to, um, I'm having a brain freeze here, is Victory Estates, is it a private road or a public road? For some reason, I don't know. It's public, right? It's public. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so we have a second one. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none and seeing none, all those in favor of the motion? Gregory Strange, aye. Suzanne, aye. Stetson, aye. Kevin Murray. Anderson, aye. All right, Mr. Unanimous. Next and, up, oh, go ahead, Stephanie. Oh, no, I was just going to say, um, Town Council, it will be returning to their um, monthly office hours at town offices, which makes it a lot easier to get a hold of him and follow up on these things. So um, I will be talking with him tomorrow. And Bob, I'll bring that up as well. Right. Your question. I'm just curious. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think that's a good point. Okay, moving on. Um, 
So review, consider a vote on response to open meeting law complaint against the planning board dated May 17, 2021, filed by Nick and Lorna Owen on file with the town clerk. Um, so I just curious, Stephanie, we haven't spoken. I knew nothing of this until I saw the revised agenda last, I think it was Thursday, um, and with you on vacation. So I reached out to town hall and I received uh, a copy. And then I later, I spoke with uh, Connor and the last I had heard from him is that he felt this was going to be pulled from our agenda because this was a, against the Conservation Commission. And I was, so I'm just, I'm not really sure where this stands and if, if we need to do anything with this. So right. no more than so, that. So um, a little bit of background, an open meeting law complaint was filed related to Red Mill and it was filed and, and written such that it um, appears to pertain to the Conservation Commission meeting that was held on the project. Um, we forwarded it to count, town council for review, comment, and um, recommendation on how we should proceed. Um, Kate Federoff, who reviewed it, felt in reviewing it that she also thought it really pertained to the Conservation Commission meeting, but felt that as a belt and suspenders and being conservative because it was handwritten at the top of the letter, Town of Easton, Town Clerk, Daniel Sicard. And on one copy, not the one I have right in front of me right now, it had planning board and Greg's chair, Greg's strangest chair. So because it, it seemed clear to us that it was, it applied to the Conservation Commission Kate wasn't 100% certain that that is what was intended. So she asked the board to review her response and um, vote to have town council respond to the complaint. And a, a more background, just so you understand, when someone has a complaint about the open meeting law, the way it's supposed to work is that they file the complaint with the town, the town responds, um, if the response doesn't um, satisfy the complainant's um, concerns, then they can appeal to the attorney general's office. Well, okay, thank you. So you're asking us to just, I know in, in the package we were sent uh, this afternoon, there was uh, Kate's response. Yes. And you are asking us to approve sending this response? Yes. Okay. Did the board members have an opportunity to review that package that came in today? Or if not, um, it's one page of letter, which I wish I could find it. Right? And again, I apologize I for that. I was on vacation last week and um, this was just one of those, we need to respond within a certain time frame. So, do you guys? I have it in front of me. I can read it, or if you all have it, and you can. I, I can it. also display it. Okay, why don't you do that, please? I do not have it. And I'm assuming you can see that now. Yep. And in the letter, Kate is also asking for an extension, I believe. To, to actually to tomorrow. Just, just let me know when you've read it so we don't cut anybody yep. short. I'm all set. Actually, on that, Stephanie, I just have a question. Does the attached copy have the the planning board handwriting that was mentioned? 
or is that just that's not in yeah it is right uh, no well in our package it's coffee um i and i'm not even sure who hand wrote that on there but i have a but it's the same yeah. that was in our package that said Tom Clark. It's the same letter. It just had right. That means that just said planning board. I was just wondering. Yeah, I was wondering now. You, that was interesting. Like now, a little farther down, who? What is that writing? Just more. Yeah. That is Six. the um, the com the person making the complaint. Okay, so it looks like that's the person that did the writing at the top of it the does. letter. So mm -hmm. Yep. The hand, so I'm not a handwriting expert, so. <laughs> so the person that wrote the letters distributed multiple copies and they had different things written on them? Like handwritten? I, frankly, Peter, I can't tell. I can't tell if that is the ha same handwriting. That's true. Has everybody finished reading? Had a chance? Yep. Yep. Okay, so um, I see no reason why uh, we should not have this response sent. If anybody feels different, or I'll make a motion to accept the uh, response from town council. Stats and second. second. Any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none. All those in favor, Greg Strange, aye. Peter Deshane, aye. Stetson, aye. Anderson, aye. Good, aye. All right. That is unanimous. Circle back to the agenda here. Uh, okay. Architectural Review Weber Farm Barn. I'm going to have to recuse myself. So um, I did a little re reading on this. I need to blank out my screen. So if someone could just uh, text me um, when it's safe. To I will do that. Great. Okay. All right, thanks, Greg. Let me see. Now, I have a feeling you're not looking at the plans right now. Is that correct? Not yet. OK, hold on. Let me go like this. Greg, are we supposed to not be able to see you? Yeah, Greg, you can always mute yourself, uh, maybe hide. And yeah, stop your video. Share your, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there, there you go. go. Okay, now let me try this again. Oh, here we go. I clicked on the wrong thing the first time. You should be able to see it now? Yes, and oh. Stephanie, is there anyone in the audience? Um, that yes, is, Alan Drunas, hold on. Thank you for the reminder. So I just allowed Al in as a panelist. And I think, Al, if you have video, if you could please engage it, that would be great. Activate it. Otherwise, unmute yourself so we can hear you. Okay, how's that? And That's good. And um, Al, while we are um, following the, uh, the open meeting law procedure, could you uh, please uh, uh, state your name and, uh, and uh, who you work for? Uh, Alan Drunas, um, one of the owners of uh, Weber Farms. Thank you. So, um, what we're for, coming before you tonight for is we, we have a small shed that was always in the plans of the original approved subdivision that basically is going to have to go for a, a decorative uh, entranceway have the name of the subdivision on the on the gable end you know a typical sign in a stone wall type of thing on the front of the building we're going to recess the mailboxes for all the uh homes that are you know constructed out back and Are these right here? Yeah, now? that's the yep. yeah, that's the mailboxes. Yeah, trying to get you know, trying to keep that farm theme. That's why there's a shed on the front, metal roof, uh, you know, barn board siding, very simple pole barn structure. It's it's really more of a glorified uh, uh, stanchion for a sign, but it looks like a shed. 
uh, uh, tool shed, whatever you want to call it. So it's uh, really something very simple that we had, had talked about in the early stages of the subdivision approval process. And I guess I thought it would be something a little bit different and look aesthetically pleasing to uh, people driving by and driving into the subdivision. And this is um, the board will recall, this is one of the requirements for the project too, that they build this bar. Yes, and, you know, and the, you know the front porch roof. I mean, if if, if the need ever arose, uh, you know, kids waiting for school buses, they could stand under that, and you know, it was raining out or something like that. But again, it's it's a really uh, it's more of a, a, a kind of a glorified way to, to identify the subdivision to a, you know, a, kind of a farm type setting and hide the uh, mailboxes in the front, recessing them into the wood, so that it's not just a stanchion out there by itself. And Mr. Chair, if I may, um, the board will remember also that the open space associated with this flexible development um, was the area out front with the potential for use as a community garden, um, likely by the property owners. But I think, and Al, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there was a suggestion from the Agricultural Commission that maybe they could help um, promote that and work with the property owners on developing that. Absolutely, you know, of course we can't we can't force the property owners to plant vegetables there and take care of them. So if if that's you know the area is there, there's plenty of room to do it, and this shed could also ask, add as a as a you know a storage facility for tools and like kind. Um, if 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 that happens and the people who own, you know, are ultimately going to own this when they're done and they get together with the agriculture or whoever they want to do this community garden, it would be great. Again, we can't force them to do it though. Right. All we can do is provide them the space and, and, and we've done that. That makes sense. Cool. Does anyone have any questions? Yes, I have a question. Uh, foundation on drainage is a plan for this uh, shed. Is that of any importance in the place where this is going to be located? There's no foundation. It's a pole barn. And drainage, there's really, it's, it's again, it's so small. I don't think it's, it's in a lawn area. I'm sure the ground can absorb any, any additional runoff that this might cause, but it's, it's, it's very, very insignificant. It's a, it's a, you know, it's just a small roof area that, that uh, is being uh, supplemented. So essentially, it looks like um, a 16 by 16, if I'm correct. correctly. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, including the front porch. Correct. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Um, I think it looks good. I don't have any other questions. Um, anyone else? Any questions or motions? I think it looks good. Um, the mailboxes aren't necessarily recessed in the structure, though. They're just like under the porch, correct? Yeah. No, no, they're going to be into the wall. Oh, they yeah. are. So like, it looks yeah. like there's. It's just the way it's drawn, but no, we're going to cut it in so that the, the, the you know, the faces obviously will be the, uh, you know, flush with the face of the building. Oh, well, so the mailman the like mailbox the itself will be in the back side. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, they always load them from the front. Okay. As I, as I understand it. So it's just that the physical side, you know, depth of the mailbox will be inside the building, but we're trying to make them as least noticeable as possible. Sounds good to me. Yep. Okay. Um, good to me. Uh, motion to approve the architectural review. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion or um, comments from the public? I hear none. Um, all in favor of the motion, just say an aye. That's an aye. Good an aye. Okay. Is that all four of us? Yep. Okay, uh, motion passes. All right, thank you, Mr. Okay. for doing this. All right, thank you very much, members. All right, Stephanie, are you texting Greg? I just did.
All right. Did you miss me? Yes. Good night, right, sir. Let me dig up my agenda here again. I had my my desktop so well organized, I tend to make sure I hit it, everything. I lost it all. <coughs> oh, I put it in there. There we go. Okay. Um, Puisa Commercial District review of district as a whole and accessory structures. Now I know this is sort of a placekeeper we've had. Um, did you have anything on this, Stephanie? Not yet. No. I thought no. maybe you and I can talk a little bit more on Wednesday. Yeah, I was gonna say the last couple of weeks have been a bit. Uh, yeah tumbled up so why don't we unless someone on the board has uh, diligently prepared something they want to discuss we can just push this off to a the only thing i would point out is the that uh, case i sent over to you greg mm -hmm. i don't know if you've had a chance to see it but there was a wild case that the appeals court in massachusetts came down with last week and it basically said over a dissenting opinion that an 18 megawatt electric power plant with four 35 foot cooling towers was an accessory use to a marijuana cultivation processing facility. And that was significant because the interpretation is that it was an agricultural use, which would be permitted in virtually any district in Massachusetts. And so if something significant like that was an accessory use, I thought it could potentially have um, Oh, well, let's put it this way. I thought it was interesting as, uh, or it would be interesting as part of our discussion on accessory structures. How many, how many stacks did you say it had? Four 35 foot cooling towers. Four I can, for, I'll forward the decision to you as yeah. well. I, I, yeah. I only <laughs> sent it to Greg for some, inadvertently. I should have sent it to the whole board. Yeah, that would, that would be interesting to take a look at. That's how most things come to me inadvertently. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, I, I did. I uh, I was out of the office all day, but I, I sounds interesting. And just just for the folks at home, uh, that is simply uh, Member Stetson sharing uh, a legal opinion um, related to some of the uh, the legal works we do. There is there is no current marijuana facility of any type uh, yes. has been proposed <laughs> that we know of. So I don't. Thank you for the clarification. I don't, I don't clarification. want to tomorrow. I don't want to get yelled at on Facebook. I don't need to be called this, any more mean names. This was in Charlton. <laughs> yeah, this is so just folks. Um, there, there's nothing proposed. Uh, and and oh, thanks for sending up on this. That sounds still has voted against allowing merit. Right. Uh, and we have, we have separate zones for all that. And yeah. all, but but, but it's, it's interesting where he says it's an agricultural use. But but anyways, that's that's um, that's good case. Good case study presented by a provided by Bob, um, nothing proposed right now in East Um Just on, on the, I guess on this, the, the Quisit district um, as a whole, or the, uh, the Korea property that we've been looking at, is that just completely on hold for now um, until there's a more attractive you know, zoning options for that? Or what's, what, That's, have you heard well, you know, that was passed at town meeting. The, you know, yeah. everything that we approved was passed at town meeting. Uh, I don't. I haven't heard anything. I don't know if Stephanie has. Or we, we haven't been contacted yet. So until, you know, we we create the zoning, um, and and then people, uh, you know, become applicants when they apply to it. But I, I've heard nothing. I don't know. Well, I I can tell you what I have heard is that there there's just another developer builder that's interested, and um, they were and this was a few weeks ago. They were going to have some discussions about what what it would look like and. So it's really, and then we'd get back in touch. Okay, thanks for the update. Um, and keeping in mind that everything that district special permit wise, we have architectural review of as well as other reviews. Hopefully they will reach out to us before they go too far up the road. Uh, okay, ZBA request for comment, comprehensive permit 21-10, Black Ledge LLC, 8791 Union Street. This is the 40B. Yeah, and I'm going to share my screen. And, and Greg, I'm just going to say, um, this all came in, the 
application filing came in as I was leaving and then after I left for vacation. So I only had a chance this morning to really look through it. Um, it seems what they've provided with the application, and I was talking with Suzanne today, I need to call Rick Lincoln, is the conceptual document uh, drawing, um, which I know I'm pretty sure you've seen in the past and shows the right here, this is the location. Um, and then they just showed again, um, it was a site plan, but it looked like it was for the purposes of demonstrating the movement of emergency vehicles in and out there. What, and there was a grading and drainage plan. So yeah. in my mind, they haven't submitted a full engineered plan yet. And Suzanne also mentioned and um, that one, I think it's building two, right, Suzanne? That Correct. they're going to be shifting back further away from Union Street. Now, the, the, uh, the one PDF that came in one of the emails, I think Stephanie, you know, from you and Suzanne, uh -huh. that was for maybe a previous version because they had one of the um, detention basins on the um, on the southwest corner, like near building one. Let me see if I have that. I'm not sure where it came from. There was just like a it was a one attachment somewhere along the line. Right. There's two different versions of the site plan that I see. Yeah. But this is the one that's been permitized. So this must be what they are they have presented to at least initially for their their special permit. Let me get down here. So that's still um, the same. Okay, one well, of them one of them shows a little parking below building one, which is the one you just scrolled by. Other one does not have any parking below unit one. Or building uh -huh. So could we, um, I mean, we might have any comments today, but can we still have additional comments later? Yes. If, yes. And if, I was uh, talking to Suzanne saying that I think the board should uh, basically reserve your rights for comments. I mean, this is not going to be reviewed in one hearing with the Zoning Board of Appeals. So I think we should, the, uh, my recommendation would be, let's get the full set of documents and plans, get those out to you, and then have um, more discussion at the next meeting. That would be my recommendation. And then you, um, I would expect you'd have an opportunity to, to really put some comments together. Well, that's certainly better than getting one page that's the wrong plan the day of the meeting, so. I think that's good advice. Yeah, and you know, just on that, I just, given what we have to right now, I just will say that, you know, I know the person, like like really almost like the only the one single family residence that might be a butt and a butter. Mm -hmm. So that's on that, um, on the left here, on the Western side of the property. Yeah, so he's concerned about, you know, the, I guess, you know, the screen, the screening or, you know, leaving the landscaping. Is that, uh, I want to say 38 or 83? Well, that would be to the left of building one, on the way we're looking at this plan. So that'd be it's to the right west. Here. Uh, right. Yeah, there you go. Right there. Right there. there. Okay. I know yeah. that yeah. Mr. Lincoln has had a lot of conversations with one of the abutters who has, a, has had concerns and that there are ongoing conversations to make sure that they're not adversely impacted. Yeah, so I just didn't expect it. That um, that rendering of some trees was the uh, was the final landscaping uh, plan. So I I, not, I highly doubt this is. I mean that that to me is a landscaping concept. It's you know, we need to see a detailed plan. Yeah, it appears like the ones showing the um, emergency egress are a little more developed. They have some crosswalks and yeah. the chain link fence. They're relocating yeah. one of the communities. I thought there. I had those in this second, uh, but I don't. You, you emailed them to us, so. There's the one type. I guess I don't have what. Six one four twenty twenty one. What we got is what it was on your screen. It was the one page sort of site rendering. Yeah. The photo. That's the only things we received. This one. So, 
So. Well, yeah, but on Permadise, there's a six page PDF with the chain link. Right, but I'm, we're talking about the email that was sent. That's why right. we received. Okay. But I think, Peter, even that six, what I saw this morning with Suzanne, even that with the six pages, I think three of those pages were primarily focused on the emergency. Yeah, I, yeah, I can, maybe let me to the fire department or something. I don't yes. know. Yep. So uh, clearly they need to submit more complete plans. Yeah, in the past on all of the 40 Bs, we've received the full set of working drawings so that we can yes. adequately review and comment. Right. And I think we've covered this and we have more, there's no deadline pending. So hopefully we can get this in a timely fashion. So we have adequate time to review before our meeting on the 28th, at which time I'm sure we can prepare a nice comment. Sounds good. All right, so let's move on. Unless anybody else has anything to say on that? Don't wanna cut anybody short. We good? All right, board reorganization. Uh, currently I'm the chair, Peter is the, what do we call it, clerk? Clerk. Vice chair, clerk has some name in this town. And um, our, our one year terms are up on uh, June 30th. Um, I'm willing to continue, but as usual, I never wanna keep anybody from it. Um, so, thoughts? I'll make a motion to uh, for Greg to be chair. Second. Um, any further discussion? I guess we could have grouped them together, but we already started. Um, so all those in favor? Oh, Stats and I. Anderson I. And I mean, I'm really willing to chair that, you know, the, the co chairs. If anyone else wants to try it, uh, you know, I know some people have been a little more, uh, would be good, good for them. Uh, good job. Whatever, they but, haven't uh, burned us in energy yet. yet. <laughs> yeah. I won't, I won't take it. I won't take it badly if anyone else would like to give it a shot for a while. Knowing that the chair is not allowed to make motions, so I'll open it to the floor. Well, would anyone else be interested? I would make a motion for you to be the uh, <laughs> chair if you want it. Otherwise, no, I think that was just more of an awkward silence. Although, I, no, I shouldn't say that. I was trying to think about how to formulate the uh, the motion. So it's motion, motion to, to a point. Oh, yeah. confirm. Okay, Maybe motion to confirm. Peter for vice chair. Second. There a second. Did I, did I hear a second? Audio went out. Anderson second. You, Peter, you better buy the, the group of beer soon, I think. Yeah, right. I mean, well. good job. <laughs> uh, all those in favor, strange aye. Stetson and I. Anderson I. <clears throat> Great. All right. Well, congratulations, Peter. And thank you, board. I, I, uh, I do enjoy doing it. I hope I. I hope I do the board and the and the town uh, proud and a good service. And if not, um, I'm sure you'll let me know. Uh, board reorganization, reappointment, representative appointments to CPA and capital planning, um, which I currently hold both. One out of enjoyment, <laughs> one because you guys all took a step backwards while I was standing. <laughs> I think, as you know, it's customary for for the for the uh, chair. Um, to to take the the lead on both of those committees. Uh, yeah, thanks, thanks, big guy. He wants one of them, so that means he has to get both. Um, I I you know, I would do so. I, I like CPA. I would do it for one more year. I've been on it for a while. Um, but I you know I think it's an important committee, and there are I'm vice chair. There's a couple things I'd like to get done at this year, but I, I think I'll I'll probably walk away from it uh, after this year. Um, and uh, capital planning, um, yeah, it's 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 interesting. I'm, I'm it's hard for me not to. Well, I I uh, I loathe speaking uh, discussing budgets, but uh, but you know, I know Peter did it for three years. I know everybody has busy lives, so um, I'll if no one if no one else wants either one of them, I'll uh, I'll gladly continue.
What it, what what does the job entitle? The... Well, which one? Capital planning. So, yeah. cap, so you know, we have the capital budget in town, um, and so there's a committee. There's five or six of us um, appointed from different committees, and um, we listen to presentations from all the town departments. Uh, you know, uh, for, for budget requests, it may be a new fire, you know, a new fire truck for the fire department. It may be equipment, you know, various, various capital needs, equipment, supplies uh, for planning. It's, it's software, you know, um, uh, capital requests. And then we meet with the, um, you know, Wendy uh, Nightingale, the town accountant, uh, sort of runs the show and does a great job. And then we meet with, we have a couple of meetings with uh, Connor, the uh, town administrator who, who oversees the budget and and then eventually we we uh we whittle down and, and we prioritize all of the um requests because you can never you know you can never refill, fulfill all of them in one year um and but it's, it's interesting you learn a lot about long-term planning you, you, you really do learn a lot about the different departments um and in fact i learned last year you know it ties it ties to planning sometimes the I learned that the assisted living facilities in town actually uh, there's a substantial expense uh, borne by the town because in these facilities um, the workers are not allowed to pick up a resident if they fall so the emergency services have to respond and and you can imagine in large facilities right. you know, they, that happens quite a bit um, and then just the expense to go out there so it's you know it, it, it is interesting it's not. I, it's not as uh, it's it's interesting. It's it's you know I just don't enjoy uh, budget speaking. I, I'm not known for my fiscal responsibility sometimes. So <laughs> you know I just say hey just put it on the credit card. No, I'm just kidding. But anyway, so that that's what it entails. So what is, what is the link with the planning and zoning? <laughs> honestly, I think it's because they both say planning. <laughs> I I for a few years. I mean I've I honestly I've said it's in the town charter. And no one can. I asked a few years ago because it really didn't make any sense. And you look at the other uh, members of the committee. I'm like, why is the planning board on this? You know. Well, um, yeah. I mean, I, I think sometimes maybe like the bigger projects, like if it's a if say a, a new sewer, um, yeah, you know, zone is a is a capital, you know, improvement or project, and it kind of ties in with the uh, you know the planning for that for that area. And actually, a lot of the things actually do the bigger things actually do sort of tie in whether or not the planning zone the planning board should have an opinion on. If we should pay for it or not, is you know that's. I'm not sure if that was contemplated when they you know <laughs> put the planning board. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know if I. Yeah. I mean, well, that's the beauty of our country. We can all have different opinions. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, but that's. I've always. Yeah. I've always thought it was kind of an odd fit, but. Uh, but you know what? We're, we're. No. Um. You know what? We're. I'm also at the same time saying towns should uh, certainly. We're a small town, and we should make sure we maintain. Um, a certain level of citizen involvement so i don't want to be a hypocrite how often they meet uh, right. oh no it's during the budget cycle probably meet peter what do you think six times a year yeah that's that's right really and it's, and it's awesome. kind of it's compressed usually i think you know most of the meetings are leading up to spring town meetings so sort of in the winter and i'm trying to think maybe we have a meeting one or two sometimes for special town meeting but but not i think it's mostly for just you know they're, they're they're compressed in a i'd say a three or four month period yeah and then the move the meetings usually move on quickly like there are materials provided yeah. before the meeting uh yep. the department head or representative will come in um tell you about the what they're proposing um some a few people might have a few questions but it, it's usually shorter than any of our you know of our agenda items in general so. yeah. if you enjoy budgets it's a good committee to be on no, <laughs> it sounds interesting, but uh, I, I <laughs> did I lose you on that last one. <laughs> <laughs> I went, I went back to work a little now. Okay, uh, as a consultant, so and I, it's unsure how much time I, I'm going to have. So, what if I told you there was free popcorn? <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Is there? No, because I'm <laughs> desperate. <laughs> free um, beer will be better. We, we almost had him. Uh, Peter, I guess we have to work on our, our duels, our uh, teaming up on our sales approach. I think I think I blew that one. My my wife is telling me from the cheap seats that I screwed up. So. <laughs>
I blew the sail, which I'm usually pretty good at that. So anyway, I'm pretty good at landing the sail. Not sure. So, Amas, are you walking away from that? Uh, yeah, for now. Yes. Ah. Yeah, <laughs> yes, never mind. Yes. I had him on the hook, but uh, <laughs> I, pull, I pulled the line too quickly. All right, I'm ready to walk the plank, guys. Thank you. I will make a motion to reappoint Greg to CPA and capital planning. Zachus. Uh, uh, any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor. I'll abstain. Scott's Strange and abstain. Scott's and I. Anderson and I. Amas, I, I, I will uh, watch the recording of this and I will polish my approach for next year. <laughs> Don't take any, no more side hustles. No more with you. Just stay right where you are. <laughs> so, all right. Well, well thank you guys. Um, Anger. Oh, no, that's, that's not there. Uh, meeting minutes. Peter, what do you have? <laughs> no, I, I looked at this on my phone and they, they look okay. Uh, Motion to approve the minutes, Kevin. <laughs> I like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, do we have a second? <laughs> second, Stetson. Any, uh, we have a second. Any further discussion? All right. Seeing and hearing none. All those in favor, strange eye. Strange eye. That's an eye. Anderson eye. Amas, that's probably the fastest you've moved in a few years over there. <laughs> Looks pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's it. Chair's report. I, I don't think, I can't think of there's anything to report. So the last, uh, I've kind of unplugged from volunteering for the last couple of weeks with my daughter's wedding and my uh, annual little vacation, but. Well, how'd the wedding go? Wedding was fantastic. Yeah. 10, 10 out of 10, but I, I, I'll talk to you more about that on Wednesday. I won't bore <laughs> the people of Easton with that. Um, anybody have anything? We all good? Stephanie, you have anything? Not today. Nope. All right. Right now. Um, oh, so just quickly, I know we talked about this last time. I know the emergency declaration ends and then I know they, they did extend it. Do we, is they there any idea when we're going back live? They have not extended it. There oh, was I thought they did last week. There was a bill that had been filed by the governor, and wow. I was told this morning that they adjourned without taking it up. Um, and I guess there was some potential scurrying. I haven't heard back from Connor. He, he said he'd give us an update. Um, the, there were just some questions about if we meet in person again. Um, so technically right at this point the zoom meetings and remote participation is not allowed and you'd have to i guess there are some extenuating circumstances um but in general it it wouldn't be supported so it's a question of where people would meet where there's enough room that people are comfortable if you have to keep your distance and, um you know if you're not vaccinated you have to be masked and and you know do we does everyone remain masked in the meeting just to you know be extra cautious and all that so as soon as i hear anything i will make sure that gets shared with you i'm sure it will also be shared by the town administrator with the board's chairs please i burned all my math <laughs> well that's inter interesting i thought I, I, know, I thought i read that it had passed so i guess not all right, well, thank uh, you. Unless it was later today. But no, no, I'm thinking like yeah. a week or so ago. I thought I heard something or read no. something. All right, well, All right. I'll make a motion to uh, close our potentially last remote meeting. Second, Stetson. All those in favor? Saying Jai. Yeah, my. Stetson and I. All right, thank you, gentlemen and lady. Thank you, ECAT. Thank you, Easton. And, uh, We'll see you guys in two weeks. Keep location to be determined. Intriguing. Yes. Good night, all. Good night. Bye. Good night.